Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Savannah and I love doing high-end Dollar Tree DIYs or honestly anything DIY on a budget. So if that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button and join our savvy family. So today's video is another Dollar Tree Christmas DIY video and I can't wait for you guys to see everything. So let's go ahead and jump right in. For this DIY, I got this garland from Walmart. It was $3.48 and it's pretty long. And then I'm taking some of these color your own ornaments from the Dollar Tree. Now I feel like for a garland, the kind that I'm about to make, you would pay like 10 to $20 for. And I made this for under $5. So I don't like the stars at the top of the tree, so I'm taking my pencil and I'm kind of just like shaping it as if the tree went to the top. Um, and then I take, I tried um, to squirm and it didn't work. I found the best way for me was to just take some scissors and just cut it through. So then I'm just sanding the top of them just to smooth out those rough edges from where I cut it so you can't really tell that they were there were stars on the top to begin with. And I'm just taking my little finger sander. If you guys have any questions where I get anything, this is from Walmart. Don't hesitate to ask. I have no, I do not care. I want you guys to have everything that you need. Most of it is always linked down below. Um, but then... Sorry, daddy left and went to the store and he was not having that. But anyways, if you guys ever have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Then I'm just going in with some of this red from Apple Barrel. I don't remember the color. It came in like a pack, but any color you guys wanna do. I know trees are green. I'm sure someone's gonna say something. I know trees are green, but I liked the way that the red looked with the black and white. It's just my style. When I do things, I do things the way that I like them and you guys can do them your way. I do these videos for inspiration. So I like them red, you can color them green, you can color them black, you can, I almost did white, <laughs> but I just thought red was super pretty. Then I'm taking the, um, I'm trying to find the middle. So I don't know why I'm taking forever to do this. Like it was, I, at first I started count them and I'm like, Savannah, come on. So then I just grab the two ends and make sure they're even and I find the middle part. Then I'm taking my finger sander and I'm just going back over and kind of just doling down this red. Um, you know, I'm sanding the side so they look kind of like rustic Christmas trees. Then I'm taking the jute that came with it and I'm just hot gluing them to the back of the trees. And you want to have it to where the two sides are sticking up so that you have something to tie it to the garland. If you don't want to use jute, you don't have to use whatever you want, but um, just make sure that you have something to tie it on to the garland. And then, like I said, just find that middle point. Um, when you find the middle point, put your first tree there. So this comes with five. So you want one directly in the center and then two coming on the outside of that. And I kind of just eyeball that, but don't be like Savannah. Okay. I thought I was being like super smart, laying it like right, up, like right across from each other, like evenly. And I tied them all. And then when I went to look at it, two of three of them are backwards. Oh my gosh. So I had to like rip them off and redo it, but you guys are gonna do better than me and you're gonna make sure that your trees are on straight. Then once I had them all tied on, don't cut the strength of the top. I just took them and kind of hot glued them. I went over the garland and then hot glued them to the back just to give it a little extra security. At first I was gonna cut the strings, but I was worried that they might like come unraveled and my trees would fall off. So I thought it would be best to still leave the tails on there and then wrap that around and hot glue that to the back of the trees. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And then I'm just laying it out, making sure everything is spaced evenly. And you guys, I love how this garland turned out. Okay, if you were to buy this at Hobby Lobby, it'd be anywhere between like 10 to $20. And I made it for five, y'all. Let me know what you guys think. So moving on, I am taking this pickle jar and I'm giving it a coat in that ivory and then I'm painting the top black. I kind of want like a, I don't know, like a modern kind of jar look, if you will, modern farmhouse. And you guys, I am so sorry. I don't know what the heck I was thinking when I set up this angle. We are crooked, we're crazy. So sorry about that. 
So once that's covered and it's dry, I'm taking some of my antique Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going through and like distressing it, giving it like a, I don't know if it's rusted, just a, you guys know what I mean, a distressed look. And you wanna make sure that you go like where things bevel out, where there's indentions, anywhere. And you guys can use whatever you want. Like this is a pickle jar. I mean, for crying out, I'm just kidding. Oh my God. It's a pickle jar. Like, I mean, Santa's cookies might have a little hint of pickle, but it's cute. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, you can use whatever you want. And then I'm taking this burlap ribbon and I'm just measuring it. Give it a little snippy snippy. And um, yeah, just hot gluing that. Then I'm taking this Buffalo check ribbon. I got this from Walmart this year. It was like 348, 398. Um, and it came with a lot. It was like a big spool of ribbon. And I'm just putting that directly in the middle of the burlap. Doesn't get much simpler than that. But I feel like the black and white kind of just tie everything together. And that um, burlap just gives it a little bit of a different texture as well. And layering, you know what I mean? Who doesn't like layers? Then I'm taking the same color that I painted the jar, that ivory Waverly color, and I'm just distressing the lid as well, just to give it some more dimension. That way it's just not such a matte black. Then I'm taking these round circular objects. They're not beads because they don't have holes in them. I got these from Michaels in like their wood section, and I wanna say they were like $2 for like a pack of, I wanna 16 it looks like. Um, so I thought I could use these for a lot of things and then I'm just taking it and I'm hot gluing it directly in the center and then I'm taking one of these little wood rounds. I got these from Walmart in their wood section in the craft area and I want to say it was like a dollar for six. Now I did find some of these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby too in their wood section, but I want to say Walmart might have been cheaper. Then I'm taking that antique Waverly chalk paint and I'm just giving it a good coat and I wipe it off of the t-shirt to give it like a stained look, if you will. You get it? You got it? You know what I mean? Then I'm taking this Mary sign from the Dollar Tree and I am cutting the reindeer off. Just be careful because once it cuts away from the Mary where the antlers are is super duper flimsy. And I did sand it down just a tad, but I didn't want to lose an antler because no one wants to lose an antler. And then I just gave it a coat of that ivory. You can leave it wood. I think wood would be pretty too. I just thought with the white, it would pop off that background just a little bit more. And then I took my black paint pen and I wrote food at the bottom. The more I think about it, should it be feed or food? I don't know. Let me know. But I just wrote food. I hate my handwriting, but I just went with it. And then once I get it like how I want it, if you have a cricket, I think Santa Claus, I think the elves are working on a cricket for me, you guys, okay? <laughs> Your girl is gonna have so many good crafts coming next year. But then I'm just taking that reindeer and I'm gluing it in the middle right above the food. And then we're gonna hot glue this to the middle of <laughs> the pickle jar. Who knew this was a pickle jar? I mean, seriously, guys. Like if someone walked in your house and saw this, they wouldn't say, you made that out of a pickle jar. They would be like, that's so cute. Where did you get that? I'm just, I'm, I'm like hyping myself up. You know, you gotta do that while you're crafting. Like, oh my gosh, I made this from a pickle jar. You feel me? Oh my gosh, I'm so, <laughs> you guys, if my, if me being like, if it's too much for you guys, I can totally tone myself down. Like I can be professional, let me know, okay? But how cute is this? I loved how this turned out. You could put cookies in there. We have dog treats like in a cute jar. We could put dog treats around Christmas. I just think this would be so cute for that. Moving on. So one of my lovely subscribers um, asked me to do this craft. I usually like doing things like that I haven't seen other people do. I do sometimes do things that I got inspiration from, but she asked me to do this and I, I don't back down from a challenge, okay? So 
I have seen people make these from crickets, but like I said, Santa Claus is still working on mine, okay? So I'm taking one of these felt Christmas trees and I'm taking a burlap sack. You can use whatever you want. And I am also taking some of this cheetah, from the scar from Dollar Tree. And I, for the burlap, I traced that green Christmas tree as is. For this, and I'm so sorry this is out of frame, but all I did was just trace the bottom of the tree and then up to the first indention. And then I removed the Christmas tree and connected it at the top where it made a triangle. Now you guys, I lost footage. You'll see in a little bit, it kind of like, I don't know, my camera died. I have no idea. I was out of memory, not died. I just made that up. I am talking from my behind. I ran out of memory, so it shut off. I was super bummed, but you really didn't miss anything. Then I'm taking my hot glue gun and I'm just gluing the sides. I don't glue the bottom because we are going to stuff these. And at first I was only gonna do two, but oh my gosh, I had to be symmetrical. So I cut another one of the cheetah ones out. And then we're just going in and stuffing these. Now I'm using that polyfill, you guys. I've had this bag, how many pillows have I made now? And I'm still on the same bag and I still have so much left. And it's only like five bucks at Walmart. So if this is something that you like to do, like make pillows and stuff, totally invest in that because it is worth it. Now you guys like, so you don't have to have a Cricut if to make things, you know, like I have been without a Cricut crafting for most of my, all of my life. Like, so yeah, a Cricut is awesome and I'm so excited to get one, but you guys, there's other options too. So don't feel intimidated if you see someone, oh, they have a Cricut. I can't do that. Yes, you can. And this is kind of why I wanted to do this. Then you're going to need one of these signs from Dollar Tree. Now my subscriber said that she had a little bit of trouble having, making her stand. This was the easiest way that I thought to do it was to have a strong, sturdy base. So I'm just taking one of these signs and giving it a good coat of that ivory. It did take a couple to cover up all of that blue and those snowflakes. I wanna say probably three. And this is where I was talking, it cut off on me, which I'm super sad, my memory was full, but so I took dowel rods and I stuck them up through the trees. I wanted them two different sizes, so I used one one length and I took one and cut it in half for the two smaller ones. I then took Jenga blocks and I kind of just wedged them in there. It is a tight fit, but they will fit. And then I hot glued the rod to them and then pushed another one over to hold them together. I took some of this little ribbon, they're like little pom-pom balls, and I just went out along the side of the cheetah print trees, and then you guys know I made an exclamation bow on the um, burlap one, and I'm so sad that my camera cut off, but I loved this. And then I just took some Spanish moss to put around the bottom just to hide where the rods went in and the little Jenga blocks were, but I don't know, I love it. So for this last DIY, you're going to need to sign. I have this one from the fall selection at Dollar Tree. And you guys, I feel like I always save my favorite ones for last and I don't do it on purpose. I promise I don't, but this one ends up being my absolute favorite. So then I'm just filling in those holes with some caulk and this is from Walmart, but Dollar Tree does carry it. I think mine's in my daughter's room. So this is just what was in front of me. Um, and I filled in those holes. If you want to hang this sign, you can leave those holes open. Totally up to you. I feel like I've done a lot of hanging signs lately, so I wanted to just make this to like be able to sit somewhere. Next, I'm taking this Dollar Tree placemat. And yes, it is fall, but you guys, anything can be what it wants when you are a crafter, okay? So I'm just going through and I'm cutting out this little red truck. You don't have to worry about the pumpkins because obviously we don't need those. So if you just wanna skip right over that, cut them out if you want, and it should look something like this. Then I'm taking one of these, like they look like napkin holders and I'm snapping it off. I just need a tree. And um, I was gonna put a present, but I decided not to because it made the truck bed look not flat, if that makes sense. And I was just kind of playing around with it to see how I wanted it to set in there. Then I'm turning into a paint mixologist and I'm taking Kelly Green by Apple Barrel and Nutmeg by Apple Barrel. And I am just mixing it until I get like a dark, almost 
olive green, if you will. It always, I, this always reminds me of candy apple though when I first start to mix them. I don't know why, but I did that first. And before I painted the tree, I wanted to go ahead and paint this sign so that it had a chance to dry. I'm taking that ivory again. I, like I said in my last video, I am digging this color right now. I don't know why. I usually use my like weight, weight. I usually use my weight. I usually use my white Waverly chalk paint, but I am loving this right now. So this is what we're doing. Again, you guys can do whatever, ever you guys want to match your decor. And I'm just giving it one good coat. You don't have to get it perfect because we're gonna go back in distress, obviously. Then I'm going in with my paint concoction and I'm giving this a good coat. And I love this green. I love the way the color turned out. But again, you guys do your thing. Do whatever color you want, whatever your little heart desires. And then I'm going back in and I'm just distressing the edges, the side, the middle, the front, the back. You guys, you know what I mean. There's no point in obviously explaining this. So into who, moving on, we're going to lay our truck. And you guys, I don't know. I just love the way this truck looks. It just looks ragged. And like, I feel like things that look homemade are super in right now. Like things perfectly done are not... I, I don't like that. I like a little bit of imperfection in my stuff. Even if I'm buying it, I like a little bit of imperfection. So I'm just gluing this little ready truck on the bottom of the ready. <laughs> this little, he's ready. Um, this little truck on the bottom. And if those edges fray, don't worry because where you hot glued it, that's going to keep it from going. So make sure when you hot glue, you glue it almost on the edge but not enough because i do like a little bit of that fraying if you don't that's cool too you can even burn the edges if you want then once my uh tree dried i'm going back in with that finger sander and i'm just distressing the same the sides the same thing that i did on the garland trees i just like a little bit of that wood to kind of show on the sides like this christmas tree has it's been through it you know it's been through it now i'm just kidding <laughs> It's been in the, what is it, the field for so long. But don't worry, it's getting taken home today. And this is where I messed up and I glued the top of the truck down, but it was easy to just kind of just pull off and I just tucked that little tree in there um, and just make sure you can put it however you want. I just got it to a position that I loved. Hey, excuse me, I'm trying to voiceover in here. <laughs> Then I'm taking some of these garland ties. I got these from the Dollar General if you watched my haul. I know that Dollar Tree does come out with these, but I haven't found them yet. And they were a dollar as well, so I just didn't want to pass them up. So if you do have a Dollar General, definitely snag these. Then I'm just making a, a round wreath. I'm getting it till I get a perfect shape. And I get a good size to cover up that fall kind of wreath in the middle. Then once I get a good shape, I'm giving it a little haircut because it was looking a little shaggy. And once I get it good in a good shape I want, I just hot glue that to the truck. Then I'm taking this Farm Fresh Apple sign. I bought this sign from the Dollar Tree. I got it because it was the shape of an apple, obviously. And I took this off because I made a cute little sign for my daughter's teacher. And I'm just cutting out that Farm Fresh sign. Then I'm taking it and I'm Mod Podging it to the sign. And you guys, don't judge. It's a love-hate relationship, okay? So we're just gonna go with it. But the... Um, I guess the shininess of this I wanted to take away and that's why I did decide to use Mod Podge instead of like hot glue or a glue stick. And then once I covered that, I am taking this um, sign. It is from Dollar General. It is a dollar. They are window clings. And I just wanted the cut and carry so that you knew, like, I don't know. 
kind of like gave a little bit more to the farm fresh. Um, and then I mod podged over that as well. Then I'm taking these silver bells. These are from Dollar Tree as well. They come in like a little pack and they're like this smaller ones. I want to say they're over near like the wood and like the craft section of Christmas area. They're not like ornaments or anything like that. And I'm taking four and I'm gluing them around on this wreath. And then to take away from like the shininess of the bells and give it a more rustic vibe, I'm just taking my antique Waverly chalk paint with an old crusted brush. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to distress with, by the way, an old brush because the bristles are kind of hard and you don't get like those perfect lines. They're kind of like strag straggly, if that makes any sense. Is straggly a word? <laughs> and I'm just taking it and going over the bells to give them like a rusted bell look. Did I already say that? If not, I said it again. <laughs> Then we're gonna make a bow for this. And you guys already know how I like my bows. So a little backstory. I don't know if you guys watch Brooke from Refab. This is where I learned her how to make these bows. I used to not be able to make any kind of bow. Now I can pretty much do any kind of bow. So, sorta, not like any kind of bow, not that but you, you get what I'm saying. But these are my favorite because they're just so messy. So if you're new here, you will see me doing these bows a lot. I like the Reap Fab Messy Bow. I call them little expos because that's what they look like, okay? But yeah, so I'm taking some burlap from the Dollar Tree, some um, lace from the Dollar Tree, and some raffia. I didn't want to do any red because I didn't want to take away from that pretty red maroon of the truck, if that makes sense. And if you guys don't follow Brooke on any platforms of social media, you got to. Her name is Brooke. It's refabbed. I follow her on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And she is just so creative. I love her and her personality because I'm a little bit Southern. I was raised in the South and I just, I love her. So definitely check her out if you haven't. So speaking of the South, I don't know if you guys watch NFL football, um, Dak Prescott, he is the quarterback of the Cowboys. Um, I'm not a Cowboys fan, but this is just weighing super heavy on my heart. He played at Mississippi State, um, but he broke his ankle last weekend and it was brutal, you guys. Like it gave me chills to watch. So just pray for a speedy recovery for him. I just, I can't even imagine what he's going through right now, but you guys. How cute is this? This is my absolute favorite from today. Which one is yours? Let me know down below. And also at the end of this video, I just wanted to give you guys a little behind the scenes other than just crafting into my life. Addie had a softball game Saturday. They won, they've tied two, lost one, and this was their first win. And she got two hits and her first hit, she like stood there and was shocked. So her second hit, I'm like, run, run, baby. <laughs> and then these are my boys at the park, AJ and Ripken. And because Addie, they won their first game, I took them out for Froyo. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it's like a frozen yogurt place and you get to pick your toppings and it was Ripken's first time and he loved it. So these are just a cute little clips of them. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.